Greetings people, it's Jared here, Wolfgang1, back to do another Transformers review. So, um, this one hasn't been requested by anyone in particular, I just fancied doing this because he's been sitting on my shelf for years and I've never really, you know, thought too fucks about him quite frankly, but I thought, you know what, I'll sit down and I will I will try and look at him the same way as I look at all the other things in my collection. So, uh, without further ado, this is the review for Generation 1 Bombshell. Okay, so here's Bombshell in his uh, alt mode. His alt mode is a uh, apparently, according to the uh, Transformers Identification and Price Guide by Mark Belomo. Yes, I still have that book and the updated version he did a couple of years later. Um, according to that, <coughs> um, Bombshell is a rhinoceros beetle. Um, uh, make of that what you will. Um, I've never seen a rhinoceros beetle um, in real life. Um, so I'm going to give him uh, a bit of a twist. Uh, this is um, Bombshell in his dung beetle mode. I quite like the idea of him being a dung beetle. Um, but obviously this this whole thing gives that um, less credit than it deserves. So um, so this is, this is Bombshell. And I picked Bombshell up. I think he was um, a TFN purchase. And I think I got him for about £10 or £15. Pound. Um, he wasn't complete. I managed to get his gun on eBay for like, I don't know, three quid or something like that um so in that sense he is that is 100 complete um bombshell was a 1985 decepticon uh along with kickback and shrapnel although he did appear in the 1984 cartoon um plague of insecticons and you know insecticons at a picnic and like sort of shit like that um and he he's quite an interesting character because he um Bombshell is able to fire something called cerebral cerebral shells into people's heads. And once that cerebral shell takes hold in the central nervous system or the microprocessor or whatever it is he's fired into, um, that person becomes instantly under his control. So that was always um, quite an interesting thing that Bombshell could do. I don't know how often he did it in the cartoon. Uh, he did it a few times in the comics. Um and you know that as as um sort of special powers or special abilities go that's that's fucking up there really isn't it quite frankly um the toy um was i guess at the time the equivalent of uh, a mini bot um in in the sense that it would have been a lower price point transformer uh, sort of like down the lower scale of, of price points because it is more basic than say the decepticon jets or um or anything else um and you know he's he's seen better days i guess i mean there's um let's, let's let's bring this in so you can actually see it uh there's a bit of chromeware um on the uh whatever this is um on his uh protrusion uh, that's so quite that there's there's a bit of chromeware on his protrusion um you know because obviously it's old at this stage on the underside where you can see where his um thighs would be there's chromeware on there as well um there's a tiny little bit of um paint chipping i think yeah his, his chest is uh, die cast which is which is cool um but bombshell was from was he the diaclone line or microvan or something like that um has a open up compart compartment just here that a little driver can sit in um obviously they didn't come with little drivers because they're supposed to be like sort of sentient robots but that that's a feature that wasn't removed um when the molds were like sort of ported over and rebranded so it's nice that he's got an open up little compartment section but it ultimately serves no purpose in the world of the transformers um he's got a nice little rub size so yeah 1985 uh, decepticon you can just see that it's it's showing through the decepticon there and the stickers on it are all original um i haven't rep labeled it maybe i will at some stage but to do that i'd, I'd give it a full restoration like try and paint in some of the chrome that that's um that's sadly uh, faded. And I don't know whether I would have to paint over the chrome already there or I would have to sand the whole thing down. I don't know. The whole thing now thinking about it sounds like more aggro than it's worth. Um, so he came with um, a little gun. The gun's also uh, showing quite a few signs of being as old as it is. Um, so all sculpted in yellow plastic and then sprayed, sprayed um, painted chrome afterwards. So that doesn't go anywhere in the alt mode, I've noticed. So... Um, he doesn't have one of those shitty attack modes that seem to be so popular. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's rhinoceros beetle mode, or you know, I'm I'm going with dung beetle because you know it amuses me at least. Um, there's not really a hell of a lot to say about him. Focus, thank you. There's not really a hell of a lot to say about him in this mode. I mean, he's he's transformation is very very simple, um, but he's quite compact. 
um, which is nice. Uh, yeah, not really a massive amount to say about him. Um, one of those few um, Decepticons that hasn't really received that many updates that I can think of, there was the... Ah, uh, what was it? The Combiner Wars version of Bombshell, which I bought, uh, which I maybe I'll do a review on at some point. And it was basically just an updated version of this, a slightly more snazzy, um, more streamlined version uh, of, of this. Um, but for me, it didn't really add too much to the already existing um, character design or anything like that. It was, it was a nice, nice little thing. About, oh, you know, I've got a Combiner Wars bombshell, um, but that's about as far as my affiliation for that thing goes. And there's a little bit of a paint wear, as I said, just, just here. This joint here is quite loose. Uh, so there's a little bit of paint chipping there, a little bit of paint chipping just there, and just a little bit around the arch just there, I think, maybe, yeah, on both sides and just on the underside just there. Um, you know, obviously showing showing its age. Now, I do believe the Insecticons were, were knocked off at some stage, um, but thankfully, this isn't one of them. So I'm just going to have a drink of my vodka and coke. Ah, lovely. Um, yeah, and I guess uh, I guess we'll take it away, mate. I mean, he he's fine for what he is. Um, the and one thing I will say in the in the uh, in the G one uh, cartoon, the the Insecticons were always good at um, sort of uh, they always had loads of clones of themselves and sort of things like that. So there'd always be like hundreds of thousands of, like sort of troop builders. And I know that people tend to uh, troop build Scourge for like the sweeps and sort of things like that, which makes it very difficult for anybody else to fucking get a sweep or a scourge, but, you know, whatever, because people always troop build them, and Sharks Cons, come to think of it. Um, but I've never seen too many examples of people uh, troop building the Insecticons with their clones. So, you know, double standards there? Who knows? So let, let's take him to, uh, let's, let's take him to Robot then. So we're going to start off with um, folding out this, this back section just here and just fold those out to the sides, well, out to the sides, out to the end, just like that. Uh, there we are. As I said, the transformation of this is going to be basic as fuck. And then these two sections on either side, um, spin those round on the hinge just there. That comes out to the side. And then finally, flip up this little panel just here and bring the protrusion back like that. And that is Bombshell in his, uh, in his little robot mode. Um, yeah, let's let's see if I can scale that back a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so there's Bombshell in his in his little robot mode. You know, he's he's I actually quite like him. He's got he's got far more character in in this mode than he does in his rhinoceros beetle mode. Um, it's just a shame, like sort of these these old figures like this, um, where they they did like sort of have paint on on the face, where you can see they don't make any um. Uh, they do nothing to accentuate the eyes or anything like that. So the eyes and the mouth plate and the nose, they're all painted in silver. Whereas it would be nice to have just a little bit of detail there on the eyes. If I ever get hold of any more Seeker um, stickers, maybe I'll give him a set of eyes from a Seeker or something like that, just, just so, so, so they stand out. Um, it's got a nice little bit of paint sorry, on the uh, on the crest, on his head just there. But his animation model always had the protrusion uh, facing forward uh, like that. Focus, you fucker. There we are. Always had the protrusion facing forward, but on this one it looks like shit, so it has to sit at the back there. You can either have it like that, or I guess you could have it down like that. Um, so yeah, having it up like that makes him look like he's got more kibble than he actually needs. But it is designed to move, but you can have it down at the back there, so he's got a much tidier robot mode, and it doesn't really detract if you take it all the way down. Um, so give him his little gun in his hand. And there we are. There he is. Uh, in terms of articulation, his arms will do a full 360. And the legs sort of move in on that joint, but that's for transformation. Downsides of the robot mode, I would say, is because of the way the legs fold out, you've got these horrible, unsightly gaps right at the front. Let me get some light on this motherfucker. You've got some unsightly gaps right here at the front um, where he should have, I don't know, shins. And... Uh, kind of it would be nice if there was some way of like sort of because you don't really see these things from the back you don't really give a toss about the back but it would be nice if, if it maybe it folded out like that and then this panel here flipped round and then locked into place just here to hide that so this if this was at the back you wouldn't care less 
But if, if this panel at the back could just fold around and just go around like that and hide that unsightliness. And the other thing is as well, um, what an unimaginably shit place to put stickers, right? Especially if you're going to be folding these up and locking them in like that. Those stickers are going to rub, they're going to peel, they're going to do all sorts of weird and wonderful shit. And that's why stickers end up looking like this. I mean, do you remember the um, the arms of my Generation 1 Prime? Um, where those stickers are situated, every time it rubs against the uh, the plastic uh, and the metal and that, they, they're just peeling and scraping and doing all sorts of shit. Um, and yeah, he's, he, as I said, his little chest opens up as well um, for a little diaclone driver that, you know, obviously these things didn't have. Um, but it's, it's nice in that sense. So when I was like a kid and I had like sort of kickback, if in my games, if he got damaged, um, then he'd be lying down. He'd have his chest open so they could do repairs. I actually had bombshell as well. I got bombshell um, originally from a, a car boot sale uh, with no weapon and his protrusion uh, was snapped uh, round about uh, here-ish. So he didn't have a full protrusion, but you know, you know that that, that didn't stop him in my games. He, he was still fully functional, just um, shall we say circumcised. But that is um, focus. That's a generation one bombshell in you know all his glory, shall we say? I mean, he's he's harmless. He he, he fills out a nice little spot on my shelf. Um, he's he's there to bolster the numbers he's he's not a standout figure he's you know i think i think his characterization in the comics and what they did with him in the cartoons and the comics and things like that probably gave him more uh weight and gravitas than perhaps he warranted but you know as as a little toy as a little shelf you know or troop filler on, on my shelf and like sort of shelf filler um he, he he does what he has to do. He, he does the business, you know. He, I've got no qualms with this at all, other than this god awful shit just here that they could have, you know, maybe done something with. But then again, I mean, I'm looking at this like sort of 35 years down the line, saying, "Oh, if this panel flipped round and hit, hit this thing in the legs, you know, we're, we're barely lucky that 35 years ago, toy engineering was able to make this joint do that in the first place, really." So I'm basically bitching and quibbling over nothing. But then again, that's always been, um, I think, my number one selling point more than anything else. So, yeah, um, I like him for what he is. He's nothing special, but he's far from being a steaming pile of cack. Um, and actually, considering his age, he's, a he's actually faring uh, okay. He's, he's faring a lot better than um, uh, Shrapnel is to a degree, because Shrapnel's got issues in his legs. But I will come on to Shrapnel um, another time, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching this review. This is Joe Gavin Barry, also known as Wolfgang One, saying I'll be back at some point in the future with more Transformers reviews, more Seven Days to Die, and more other shit that's going to be filling up my channel as the weeks go on. Um, if For those of you who haven't um, or forgot from last week, um, I have started a Patreon channel, so um, a Patreon account, so if you want to go over and uh, donate to my Patreon, that's uh, shit, there we are, um, feel free to do so. Um, you'll get your name in the credits on my videos and there'll be other things available to you um, the higher up the tiers you go. I'm still trying to work out selling myself on that. It feels a bit um, unnatural and weird, to be honest. But just just head over to the Patreon. The link's in my uh, description thing. Head over to the Patreon and, and see for yourself if, you, if it's something you can even be bothered to get involved with. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this. This is me, Wolfgang1, saying take care and I shall see you soon. I'm